Welcome to International Jazz Day. We're here at the Sydney Opera House in Sydney with uh, partnering with UNESCO, the Herbie Hancock Institute of Jazz, amazing, and also the Arts Unit of New South Wales Department of Education. This land that we're on is Gadigal land, and I'd like to pay respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and to pay our respects to all country men and country women and elders past, present and future. And this actually was called Jubagali, which translates in Gadigal to gathering ground. And that's what we've done here today. We've gathered to have this wonderful class. Now this class is a rhythm section workshop with the Herbie Hancock Institute Fellows. And the Herbie Hancock Institute of Jazz Fellowship at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music is a two year program that's tuition free to get an ensemble of musicians to study under the greatest living masters of our time. And we have the class of 2020 for you here today. Would you like to meet them? Yeah. Come on, they've come all the way from America. Would you like to meet them? <laughs> all right, okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> all right, first up we have Paul Cornish on piano. We have Emma Dayhub on bass. Roni Aitan on harmonica, Chris Lewis on tenor saxophone, Aidan Lombard on trumpet, Leonard Simpson on alto saxophone, and not forgetting Malachi Whitson on drums. Come on out. And they represent some of the greatest musical talent of our time. And you've studied under Institute Chairman Herbie Hancock, Claire Allen, Terry Lynn Carrington, Benny Golson, Robert Hurst, Christian McBride, Dick Oates and others. Now please give them a massive round of applause. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. This is a beautiful place and uh, thank you for having us. Uh, how are y'all feeling? You good? Like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> um, so I would love to hear y'all play uh, something. Do y'all want to see the? Uh, should I count it off, or I don't know what tempo you want to take it. Sure. I'm gonna hang out with Henry.
thank you, thank you guys so much for, for that. That was awesome. Yeah, my man right here. Yes. Yes. No, thank you. That was that was beautiful. Um, so great job. We're here to talk about uh, the role of the rhythm section. And these are my colleagues, Malachi and Emma. Everyone say hi to Malachi and Emma. Hey, guys. Uh, they're two of the most awesome musicians in the world, and I get the pleasure to play with them every day. And so, um, but we're, gonna, we're here to talk about the, the rhythm section. So in general, um, I just want to ask y'all, how do y'all feel about the rhythm section? Do y'all ever think about them? Like, how do you feel about <laughs> <laughs> how do you, how do y'all feel about uh, the support y'all get from from that side? You know, or y'all just like you know I'm in my part right here. You know, I ain't like I don't think about it. Anyone, you know, is that is that a hand or you just like son son? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Uh, thoughts? Anyone? No. They're all right. They're cool. Yeah. Yeah. No complaints. No complaints. That's good. No, I feel you. That's good. That's good. Um, how do y'all feel, like, in terms of, like, do y'all feel like your part's, like, irrelevant as a rhythm section, or do you feel like, I'm in this thing, like, we're, we're doing this thing together? That's awesome. That's how it should feel, honestly, like, as a, as a whole band, y'all, everyone should, you know, know your role, but, like, know that it also plays a, a big part in the, in the full picture, and that's important uh, all around. Remind me of your, your, your two names again? I'm sorry. George. George. Henry. Nice, nice, strong, like, uh, I feel like those are like, uh, like old, like medieval, just like strong names. Like, okay. Awesome Very job. But, um, but anyways, uh, I want to go back to the solo section and I sort of just want to see um, uh, what happens. Do, does everyone know the changes on the, the solo section or just the solo? You know what? No? Um, okay, how about, how about we learn it now? Do you, can we go back to the solo section? Okay, so it's a, this, does anyone know the form? What's the form? Two extra bars, right? Did everyone know that? Two extra? Okay. So watch out for those two bars at the end. You know, <laughs> tricky. Uh, does everyone know what key it is in, like the concert key? What, what's the key? F minor. Does everyone get that? We're in F minor? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Now, my man got it. You see the way he sat down when after his solo? He's like, yeah. Straight face. <laughs> uh, okay, so F minor. Um, does everyone know what happens in the F minor blues? All right, so we're gonna play the form one time, and then uh, I'm gonna pick some different people to solo um, to get in there. So can we play just one chorus of the, the blues form and, and keep going? One, two, or one, two, three, four. <laughs> So it doesn't seem too bad, right? Is it? Is anyone scared of it? Like, ah, I don't know what I'm gonna play. No. All right, cool. Let's go. My man, right here. Let's go. All right, one, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Um, so, I'm sorry, remind me of your name again. Will. Uh, yeah, you and the, the other, where's the other Will at? My man, all right, cool. So Will, that was awesome. All the notes were there, you know. Um, but what I sort of want to get at is how can you play together with your, your bandmates? Um, do you feel like you're listening to them or do you sort of feel like you're just going? That's all right. We're we're all we're all about uh, growing, you know. And that's thank you for being honest. How did y'all feel in, about the solo? I mean, not about his plan, but I just meant like overall interaction. Is all for you connected? Okay. Uh, so let's try something. Um, I sort of want y'all to bounce ideas off of each other, but I want you to start with an idea, and I want you to go off of that. But I don't want either of you to play anything unless it's actually coming from the other one. So does that make sense? Um, so let's try it again. Also, do we have Please. a soloist stand up when the solo? Oh yes, right. That'd we would awesome. love to see your face. Yes, I know the sun is is that. coming through, but you know, bear with us. Got all dressed up, you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> all right, one, a two, a one, two, three. <laughs> How did that feel? Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And that was awesome. And um, just remember that the where you can go together is always further than you can go with as an individual. You know, especially in this setting as a band. You know, for the music's always better when y'all are tuned into each other and and everyone's listening because the places you can go together, like I said. Thank you. See? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, would anyone like to try? No? Also, one thing, yes, one thought. Um, also, I noticed that when you left space, you tended to repeat what he just did. Mm -hmm. And I would invite you to go beyond that instead of just mimicking him, feeding him ideas as well. And like, it's like um, if, if someone's, someone at a restaurant says, um, what would you like today? You wouldn't say, what would you like today? You would order, right? <laughs> so, so continue the conversation rather than rather than mimic, and and um, and then feel free to like you had this um, when you, you very very predictably left space. You would say something and leave space, and and maybe even try to uh, continue your phrases in um, more unpredictable, you know phrase lengths, um, maybe jump on what he's saying sooner than he might expect, or continue your phrase a little longer so that when he jumps in, you're almost like saying stuff at the same time, you know, play with uh, almost like, it becomes the interaction between the rhythm section and the soloist becomes uh, like, you're, like a continuous, almost like you're both saying things at the same time while, you know. It's a um, conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's like talking to each other, you know? And uh, I noticed, one thing I did notice too is when you started listening to each other more and talking to each other more, you look, you guys look like you're having a better time. So um, I think when we try it again this time, I'll uh, just take that into consideration. It's kind of like a conversation because you guys have so much facility already. So if you, if you have an idea and then you hear that idea and you want to take something from that idea and then expand on that idea, you know, these are all kind of different types of approaches you can take to 
improvising with each other. So it sounds great though. And and for for a bass player to get to get off the page and get off, I know like uh, the the paper tells you what to do. Especially, does everyone know what the groove at the beginning and at nine? Do you know what what part of the world that groove comes from? What country? Cuba. Did anybody else know that? You did. All right. So those those things are very important to know that that up until the swing section at 37, that that all comes. All the rhythms in there come from Cuba. And so listen to Cuban music, and that'll help you get off. Like, I know you have these long notes written in the part, but you can actually, like, his ride cymbal pattern, that dun 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 you can actually mimic that a little bit in your bass parts if you listen to Cuban music, listen to what the bass players play. The gig get way more, you know, especially, I think, at the beginning when there are a lot of stuff going on in the horns, you can play those long notes and stay out of the way. And then at nine, when it's kind of just the rhythm section grooving out, you can be a lot more involved in that groove. Um, you don't have to play what's written, because it's pretty, it's just, it's a, it's like, um, I don't know, in America we've got, we've got white road signs and we've got yellow road signs. And the white road signs are the ones that you have to follow. You'll get pulled over and given a ticket if you don't do what they say. And the yellow ones are kind of like, you should do this, <laughs> but you don't have to. <laughs> this is like the yellow road sign. Like this is like an idea of, of what will work, but you can go way beyond that. Could, would you maybe like to show them? Sure. <laughs> Everyone give it up for Emma. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, let's maybe have a, a different soloist this time. Well, if we're, yeah, okay. Right there. Do you, did you want to go for the that solos? Second? The solos are over kind of the swing field, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe we can we can change it over that groove. Anybody want to solo over a Cuban groove? Oh come on! <laughs> It'll be fun. Let's try the swing no. groove first. Mm -hmm. Uh, when anyone we could we so could just start it at was it nine where y'all come in? Mm -hmm. Let's nine. play at nine real quick, um, or or at the beginning. I don't know. The beginning is just us, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Um, let's start at nine. Why don't you count it off, George? expecting the band to come in, but uh, <laughs> that's great. I mean, does that give you a little yeah. more ideas of like, like you know, uh, it gives the music a little bit more like, I don't know, makes you want to go like this, you know, something like that. Um, we, were, we were on soloing before I took a left turn. No, that was awesome. I'm going to go back to that, great. to that, those ideas, um, how to interact. There's, I don't Y'all, there's a there was a movie that came out a couple of years ago. It was about it was about James Brown, and there was a moment in the movie where he points to members of his band. He said, "What do you play? What do you play?" Oh, nah. Well, what do you play? Nah. Um, what do you play? <laughs> yeah, what do you play? No, no, no. The <laughs> instrument. The, what, did, what instrument do you play? Drum. Yes. Oh. <laughs> now let's try again. What do you play? Drum. Yeah. What do you play? Drum. Yeah. What is this? Drum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, 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 point of, the point of this scene in the movie is that every instrument is essentially a drum, and that a lot of that interaction, that conversation, comes from rhythm first. That Dizzy Gillespie said some musicians play, you know, we focus so much on harmony that some musicians play notes and then they put rhythms to them, and then other musicians pick a rhythm and put notes to the rhythms. And I've found in my experience that doing it the latter way is generally facilitates more conversation, it gets the audience involved more, people respond to rhythm. Um, so, um, That's actually something I noticed in, uh, in Will Solo when it was just you two interacting. You played a lot more rhythmically than you did initially. Was that, was that sort of like a conscious thing or, yeah? Yeah, that was awesome. Definitely came across. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking, how about we uh, we try this other chart that you have here? Yeah. Is this uh, Riptide?
My man came alive at the end. Yeah, man. <laughs> can I, can I? Yeah, uh, please. I, I've been, that was great, man. For real, I'm, I'm actually taking notes right now, so I know <laughs> when I get back. But um, I will say one thing, and, and your solo was, was blistering, um, especially those in, and, the, and the, the greatest reason for me was, was because of the intensity you brought to it in that moment. And I feel like um, that same kind of mind frame and mentality you should bring to every other section of the piece too. And it'll help uh, elevate the music to a whole nother level. Cause right now you guys are at a 10 and then you can bring it to like a 15 and a 25, you feel me? Like we are, we skipped 20, we're going, we're trying to get to 30, you know? But that kind of mind frame will help you. And, um, and uh, I know everyone says like, oh, play with more intensity. Like, what does that even mean? You know, I don't even know what it means. So, uh, but someone did tell me something tangible that helped me uh, deal with that a little bit. And they said, uh, intensity is greater attention to the subdivisions and the beat itself. And just a more focused attention to it. And what that does is that helps with the music in general as a whole. And I notice that a lot in the solo section sometimes, like the, the intensity will drop in the solo section. And, that, and that, that was kind of like a common thread in the rhythm section a little bit. And I think if you guys pay a little bit more, just a little bit more attention to uh, the, su the underlying subdivisions like the triplet beat and um, the quarter note pulse as a unit, it'll push the music even further. Cause right now I'm already feeling it. So, you know, with that little bit of spice, you know, like I'm probably gonna be knocked out of my shoes. So, but yeah, besides that, super, super killing me. Great, that was amazing. Oh, and one other thing too for the horns, um, this is just something that I, I think I've seen, seen from other big bands that I've worked with. Uh, brass players, put, the, put those horns up there, you know. Sometimes I kind of notice you guys slouching down a little bit, you know. Well, we ain't got time for that, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, put, your, put your horns up here because then your sound can cut through even more so, you know, especially in the trombones. I was noticing that a lot in the trombones. Like, you guys, I know that's a heavy instrument. I don't even want to imagine playing that thing. So you can be mad at me if you want to. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I would totally work on that when you're practicing just your posture so you can get your sound across a little stronger. You know? yeah. And Malachi had an excellent point. Um, I, I love the energy that you brought to your solo. I love the energy that everyone brought to their solo. But um, always think about how to bring that same energy to the rest of the piece. Because if you really think about it, in the big picture, your solo is only one part of this large, how many measure, like 200 measure piece, you know? And so always be thinking about what can you be doing in each moment to uplift the piece. You know, where are we going? What story are we telling? Does that, does that make sense? And I want each of you to think about how to be invested in each other's success, you know? The same way you're invested in your own solo, you know, sound great, but what does it sound like for, for him to succeed? What does it sound like for him to succeed? And what, how can we help each other? Yeah. And that goes beyond this music. And music is a reflection of life, you know? And so, um, always be thinking about that. Everyone's good. Y'all are, y'all are awesome. This is such a treat to hear you all. And so what's the next step? How do we come great? It's in the detail. It's in the subdivisions, as he was saying. It's in, you know, actually growing together as a band. How do we bring our individual, um, stories and backgrounds to this music and how can we bring it all together to create something awesome? Yeah. You know? Cause you guys are a team. Don't forget that. And, um, and if you come together more, all those things that we're talking about are just gonna happen naturally. It's like playing a game, you know what I mean? Like basketball or something. I suck at basketball, but um, that's another sport that I'm kind of okay at. Yeah, there's not a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but music is a good one I'm pretty good at. So, but you know, if you guys, you know, just think about those kind of things. Intensity, how can we bring the music together and uplift a little bit more? Besides that, yeah, you guys are all on your way to being super pros, you know, so yeah, definitely. And never, never stop learning. Always, there's always more. Like, like how we talked about in the other piece, there was a section where the groove is from Cuba. There's a section here where the groove is from what country? Brazil. See, everyone should know the answer to that question, not just my man George. So, you know, um, and, and like where does, where does like say the baseline for, for, for a samba groove come from? Well, it come, there's a huge, it's really cool. In Brazil, they've got these huge percussion ensembles and, and, and there are these two big drums over on the end. And, and the second to biggest goes boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. And then the biggest goes one, two, one, two, 
a nice bass line. Bo, ba, o, ba, ba, o, ba, ba, o, right? That's where the bass line for a samba comes from. And if you knew that, it would affect the way you play it. It would affect the groove and how kind of everything feels, you know. So never stop learning. Always be curious about where things come from and why they feel the way they do. Really cool stuff. I think we should maybe uh, demonstrate the, the groove a little bit. Ah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, before we do that, does anyone have any questions? Anyone curious? No one's curious today? No? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, well, I guess I'm the drummer, so I have to answer that, but, but <laughs> you know, um, I think the whenever I play big band music, I, I try to compartmentalize what's going on. You know what compartmentalize means? Like, um, I'll se I'll, I separate things in my mind when they're happening. And, and when we're playing the piece, we're playing the piece, you know? We're performing the piece, I want to stress the dynamics, I want to make all the articulations happen, I want to see how I can support the band in the way that I need to. When we're in the solo sections, we're a quartet again, you know? And I still wanna do my job and play my role as the drummer to help keep the ship afloat, you know? But you have a lot more liberties to stretch in the so in, in, during the solo sections because that's exactly what it is. You guys become a quartet or a quintet, wh whatever, whatever may be happening, you know? So I don't think you should be afraid to take liberties in the solo section as long as whatever you're doing is serving the music. So that means that if the backgrounds happen to come in and someone's still soloing, maybe you might want to do less comping and, and play some more of the backgrounds to help emphasize the music because that does what? It serves the music. Everybody say with me, what, what are we here to do? Serve music. Say it a little louder. Serve music. One more time. Serve music. There we go. So if you keep that in mind, you probably won't make a bad decision. One philosophy I like to live by, though, when I play big band is less is more. I love, I love the bassy big band. Yeah. Sonny Payne just, just holds it down, but then I don't know where, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's super bad. Um, and I think that philosophy, less is more, and serving the music, it's gonna take you super far. And, and as far as that goes, just try to you know, realize like, okay, we're, we're in the solo section now, so I can, I can do a little bit here. Oh, but the backgrounds will come back in, so let me pay attention a little bit more because I'm trying to serve the music. You know what I mean? Does that help you at yeah. all? Kind of like, okay, cool. Anyone else? No? Cool. Oh, from here. What's the like best way to communicate with your solo? Because it feels just more than when you're somewhat with the one who has written it, like mm -hmm. like that back and forth, I guess. Well, um, as a bass player specifically, um, there are like you don't always first of all, it's like uh quarter note pulse while it, it should always be felt but it doesn't necessarily always have to be played so like one of your one of the tools you have is is syncopation you know and you're like you're watching the bass line to hit the end of four instead of one it can actually sometimes make one feel bigger you know than than just sticking with the quarter notes um, um, like um, one of the, in terms of like, like bass players who do that a lot that I've recently gotten into, um, Jimmy Garrison is, is a great example of a bass player who in his walking lines would use syncopation right, right. everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the Coltrane Live at the Half Note, check out that record and how he kind of plays with Elvin. Um, that'll, that'll free, it kind of frees that groove up, you know, um, is, is one, way of going about it. The other way as a bass player is your note choice. Um, and especially when it comes with how you interact. Because as a bass player, you're kind of this, this bridge between, between the drums, all the rhythmic stuff happening over here on, on your left, in this case, and all the harmonic stuff happening either with the piano player or the soloist. Um, and, it's, and it's interesting how like you're, you're, when you're in the moment, you know, if, if like, 
let's say the horn player decides to play um, like a, you know, one common harmonic manipulation is a tritone substitution on a five chord. So let's say you hear the horn player do that in their solo. You know, they're playing some notes that you're like, oh, I know what they're doing, you know? You can either play that with them or you can actually choose to not play that, which will allow what they're playing to, to have something to contrast against. And so making, that, making those decisions on whether to kind of go with someone's idea, like follow them harmonically, or to, 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 to kind of stick with something that's closer to what, what, what was originally written for the song so that what they're doing, um, you know, sometimes if you can actually sometimes take the wind out of their sails by going with them harmonically. But that just comes, like those decisions just comes from, from making the decision and feeling like, did that work? Did that do what I wanted it to do? Sometimes, you know, it's just doing it over and over again. Just keep, keep at it. Um, but, but as a bass player, those are the two things you have, is rhythm and harmony. So how about we demonstrate a little bit of that? Yeah, let's go for the solo section. Solo uh, section, yeah. At 122? Uh, and uh, we can go from Will's solo. Was that a 122? Yeah, 122. Solo. Cool. My guy. Right on. Me. Okay. You want to count us in? Yeah. No, you got it. Right. I'll figure it out. Wait, 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 wait. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Yep. in the solo section for a yeah, second? Yeah, let's just loop that. Can we have you play a couple more choruses? Does somebody else want to play a couple more choruses on this? Anybody else know the changes? No? OK, OK, OK. Well, how about you play a couple more choruses just so we can work out some more of that interaction stuff we were talking about? I felt like um, in that, that was, that was really, really good. But in that moment a little bit, you kind of, uh, you, were, you, you weren't listening as much as you were before. You know? Um, I got you. You are safe with us. We've got you. <laughs> so enjoy yourself. All right? Mm. Let's try it again. Just, let's just loop the solo session for a little. Yeah? You want to count us in? Thank you. 
better. I was killing it. Yeah. So I think that's all we have time for right now. But yo, can we give them another round of applause? Um, I guess the last thing I want to say is, you know, like we were saying before, never stop trying to grow and elevate as a unit. The more you investigate this music and you listen as much as you possibly can, you're gonna develop. Everybody here is on their road, on the road to greatness. Don't even question your path. It's, go it's gonna work out totally fine as long as you stick with it. Keep listening, keep listening to each other, keep interacting, keep talking to each other. You know? Yeah, great job though. Kim, awesome. Thank you so much. Let's give them another big round of applause. A Herbie Hancock Institute Fellows and his wonderful young musicians. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that wraps up this uh, rhythm section workshop. If you're sticking around for the next one, we.